Welcome back to the Gallivanthropologist. I am Turtle. And I'm Bear, and I'm really excited. This is our Petra finale. Petra was amazing. Yeah, today we are going to start in Little Petra really, really early in the morning, take a really nice long walk to the monastery, and then work our way back. So I hope that you guys are already following along. If you haven't watched the first two of these, why don't you just pause it, go back, watch them all. You might as well binge us. This is the most binge worthy we've ever been. Subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's get going and let's go see some things. Hey guys, welcome to Sikh Al Barid, better known as Little Petra. It was built around the same time as Petra, and it's got very similar um, designs. Obviously, it's not as large, hence the name, and not as many people come here, which is really nice. There's a lot less commercialism, and if you're in Wadi Musa, might as well stop in Little Petra. Really curious to see how it matches up with Petra heard good things. And just like always, we got there pretty early and so there was a couple other people in front of us, but for the most part, it was pretty clear. So we thought that it wasn't gonna be super crowded, but as you guys are gonna see later on, this place does get pretty crowded. The first thing you're gonna come to is the first of the triclinium's this one you don't have access to, um, but it's beautiful. And what strikes me the most is the flatness of the walls inside there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's super, super smooth. And we didn't see a lot of that yesterday at Petra. But this was more of like a ceremonial area, they think. And so maybe they took a little more time. And as you walk along, you'll see some of these little shop areas and it looks like a lot of the similar stuff that they would sell in Petra, but there might've been a little bit more authentic things to buy here. So we're up in an area here and this is kind of cool. It looks like it's a trough for camels or animals or whatever. The water would flow down in here and then slowly come across at a slight decline and then when it escapes, it falls down into here and goes down into there. And I don't know where it goes from there, but uh, everything here is about funneling water and water control. So here's our answer to where it came out of. So it would come down and then it would actually be funneled this way and into this really deep cistern here that could hold a lot of water for a long time, especially because it's cool down here and the sun doesn't get down here very often for evaporation. So that's one of the major cisterns. It's the largest one that we've been able to see this close, including over in Petra. Really cool. Across from the cistern was the three triclinia, and that's just the plural for triclinium. And as you guys have learned, triclinium means dining hall. So there's all these little cut benches and they think this was probably used for special banquets. painted biclinium and this is kind of important for an argument here. There was an argument about whether they actually grew grapes and made wine but apparently you can't really see it right now because of the lighting. Some of these paintings that are preserved in here are of grapevines and so this lends towards the belief that there was actually wine being grown here. With all their control of water, they definitely could have done it. So, very important, very protected, which is a good thing. 
There's not a whole lot of attractions in Little Petra, but take the time, check out the triclinium's and the cistern, and then when you get to the end, there's this staircase, and up there is a beautiful viewpoint and the beginning of a different trail. This is what you see when you climb up those stairs. It's not really worth it. Um, this is another path to the monastery, so if you want to go to the monastery, you can go this way. It's really the only reason you should climb these stairs. Um, Otherwise, you can go a different way, which we're going to show you in a minute. If you don't want to hike the seven kilometers going up and down and up and down all the way to the monastery, you can take a shuttle 4x4 from Little Petra. It's 5 JD per person and you just walk like two minutes, catch the truck, takes you up there and then you can talk to the driver and kind of have to negotiate your way back but there's also a way to come back on the truck instead of having to hike so let's go check out the monastery and for those of you who have been with us for a while our earlier name was old souls travel and we do like to hike so we're not telling you not to hike we're just telling you if you did 26 miles the day before maybe you save yourself like six hours of hiking either way and take the truck there is a nice hike on the end and the ride is pretty invigorating so we're on this uh truck essentially with a bunch of seating and uh taking us to the monastery from Little Petra. It's like 5 JD per person. It's actually pretty comfortable and you get to see a lot of cool, a lot of cool sights that you wouldn't normally, uh, at least not without having to walk for hours and hours. And the hope is that we can talk to him, maybe pay a little bit extra, and then be able to have him take us back as well. Um, otherwise, we have to walk. And we walked a lot yesterday in Petra. Not really feeling up to it, much more walking. But the uh, monastery will be beautiful and really looking forward to it. And just in case this is your first time watching the Gallo of Anthropologists, I love to drive. The windier and the crazier, the better. As a matter of fact, we're going to be driving all the way around the world here soon. Um, man, I would love to have driven there. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it was bumpy and you can tell they've done it a few times. They know where the big rocks are and how to go on this bump so it doesn't throw everybody in the sky like they do in Nepal. Right, but at least it wasn't like super <laughs> sandy because yeah. you'll have to see next week what happens when it's super sandy and Google tells you to drive to a desert camp. It doesn't work out. <laughs> Just like a little side note there. <laughs> Not at all. This is the spot that he took us to where we could go like an extra I don't know, three quarters of a mile, save us a little bit of a walk. But when we go back to find him, because we negotiated with him, we're able to take the truck back, which is not very normal. And to do that, we actually have to go back to where we originally would have stopped, which is, like I said, another three quarters. So it's about an hour, an hour and 15 from the monastery to the pickup point, from the pickup point to the monastery. Rock and roll. I am really glad they haven't decided to make a road all the way to the monastery because that hike is awesome. Yeah, our legs were a little tired, but man, it was well worth it. The vistas were awesome. Got some great Instagram shots. Yeah, but sometimes you're like hanging off of a cliff for those Instagram shots. So they have to like shore everything up and we got to see them actually working on that. I think it's really cool that we get the opportunity to see them actually like building the walls around the walkway. And they're using like a mud and manure mixture to hold the bricks in place. It's really cool to watch and uh, it's just a cultural experience. We've been hiking up and down some stairs since we got off the truck. It's been about 40 minutes and we're here. Welcome to the monastery. It is absolutely gorgeous, and I definitely recommend doing this hike. It's a lot of really pretty views. This site is well worth the walk.
Behind me is Ad Deir, or the monastery. It's quite large, it's one of the largest in Petra. It's 48 meters tall. And in the second century AD, the Nebataeans would use it as a biclinium or a meeting hall. And they'd have meetings and religious activities. And then later on, the Christians came and they turned it into a chapel, hence its name, the monastery. And there are actually crosses inside of it that you can't see, but it's really awesome. And honestly, if it wasn't so hard to get to, I think that this would be more famous than the treasury because it's breathtaking. And there are a couple of places where you can get some good shots of the monastery for Instagram and stuff like that. I especially like the one that was in this little cave right across the way. And that was cool. There's always cool little holes if you want to get creative. And uh, it was nice spending a little time just marveling at it. But we knew that there was a heck of a hike back. So it was time to grab a little drink and then get on the road again. Well, that's a wrap for our Petra trip. We are on the truck back to Little Petra, and then we are going to make our way to Wadi Rum. It has been absolutely amazing. Um, all I can think of is that Petra probably should have been higher on my bucket list. There's so much more than anybody thinks that there is, and you guys absolutely have to do it. This has been an amazing culture trip. And at the risk of being redundant, go back and watch the other two Petra ones. This is my de facto number one on my bucket list since it beat my number one. I will tell you we're off to Machu Picchu in three weeks from when you guys are watching it and that is his number one. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's gonna be really close. Petra was amazing, but Machu Picchu still I don't know, I have high expectations, but I hope you guys enjoyed this, enjoyed our entire series, it was awesome. Next week, we're gonna be going to Wadi Rum, and you get to learn a little bit more about why dad shouldn't drive in the desert, and uh, we have ride camels. Stayed with Bedouins, stayed with traditional food, sunsets. Man. Campbell sucked up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you'll have to see that too. But we're glad you're here, we're glad you're sticking along with us. We hope that you find yourself in Jordan soon, and as always, find, find yourself, yourself on a journey. journey.